At the time of making this video, summer is almost here. It's been quite a bright spring and as happens at this time of year, my brother Ralphie has inevitably dropped off a set of solar garden lights to, for me to take a look at. He says they don't last long. He sees them come on at night, but then they instantly go off again. That kind of suggests that there's not much charge going to the battery or the battery is knackered. But they're interesting lights. Let's take a look at the construction first and then we'll analyse what's actually happened here. So I have applied a bit of isopropanol into this and cracked the seal a bit to reveal that the construction of these is very nice. Let me zoom down in this a little bit. So it's styled on the glass lamps, but these ones are plastic. I think they're plastic. Oh, that did come out earlier on when I opened it. Hold on, I shall just use the force. Oh, I've burst his light. Not to worry, I shall fix it. Uh, oh, maybe I won't. Yes, I shall do my best. So we've got a plastic shell. It's sh plastic because I can squeeze it. And then we get this solid plug that goes into the bottom with uh, built-in wires going through it. They're actually moulded into it so that when they actually terminate onto this, they just solder onto these wires and there's a little spacer between them and then they sort of hot melt them. It means that water can still actually pull in here and it can cause corrosion in here. But fortunately, in the case of Ralph's lights, I'll just stuff that in there, not entirely, and come back to it later. Fortunately, in the case of Ralph's lights, they're used indoors in his greenhouse. I shall put that together and then I'll fix that later on. These will all be in parallel, they're the three volt filaments, typically just a parallel array of LEDs inside. The solar panel itself is the type that has, I can actually see almost like little hints of corrosion under here, but it's the type that has the plastic tray and they lay, they've got a bit of tape in there and they've laid these strips of uh, solar panel material in the silicon photo, uh, solar cell. And they've wired all four in series to give uh, roughly half a volt each section. Um, which gives a 2 volts, which is the, the diode drop plus a 1.2 volt cell, almost certainly in here. Probably a, it's either going to be a triple A or a double A cell. And uh, they've then flooded this, this with resin. Now, one of the problems I see with things like this, the normal approach is to actually have a piece of fiberglass circuit board material with them on it and then put the resin over the top. With this filling with resin, it looks quite neat, but if there's any major heat, you can actually get the thermal efficient, thermal coefficient of expansion results in these cracking. You get little white lines appear across them, almost like when you bend plastic material and it has that sort of white crease. But I don't see that here. It looks fairly intact. So I think I'll zoom back out here and we'll pop this open. So if this was prone to water ingress, I'd be looking for corrosion. I'd especially be looking at the switch because the switches are very prone to that. This is not prone, it's got bugs and bits of leaves on it and things like that. But the two main things that occur are the corrosion and then of course just aging of the nickel metal hydride cell inside. Because they're only rated for like, say 500 charge discharge cycles and they tend to get baked on bright sunlight, particularly in a greenhouse. And also they get through their lifespan of cycles uh, very quickly because they're being charged and discharged every day. This is kind of not coming apart. Is it glued? I shall just take a wee peek with the light inside here. Oh, it's kind of just, it's a seal that's just kind of being extra silly. Oh, it is kind of, oh, that's it. Oh, it was hot melt glue. A little splash of hot melt glue that's gone onto that. The circuit board has the switch. It has, it, oh, I know what this is. This is going to be the little, little eight pin chip uh, in here. But the main thing we're looking at here is this cruddy battery. Look at the end of it, it's all corroded. I wonder if it's just corrosion. Oh, and it's gone green and crusty. It's got the green crusties as Eric oh, at South Main Auto says. Yeah, it's seen possibly some battery leakage perhaps. Right, tell you what, I'm going to clean these contacts up. That's well corroded. Um, and then I'll stick a new battery in. I'll just stick in a sort of Poundland dollar store battery. The ones the supplier are the minimum they can off with, which is 400 milliamp power in this instance. The smallest dollar store pound shop type, AA, is usually in the region of six or 800 milliamps. And that's absolutely perfect. It's a sort of disposable application for these that they're just going to get used to death and then replaced. Uh, I'm going to do that now. One moment, please. Back again, and here is the current state of play. You can see that the LEDs 
are lit up. They're not super bright, but that's because they run at very low power. This one is only partially lit up, but occasionally it bursts into life. Uh, the one that I broke, the connection, I fixed that. It didn't damage. These have this sort of metal strip going down the middle, I think. And uh, it soldered on no problem at the bottom. However, I put a new battery in after cleaning the contacts. And the LEDs lit up, but they're supposed to be out. Because when the sun is hitting this, when any light, it's supposed to actually uh, start charging the battery and turn the lights off. But when you squeeze the solar panel, I don't know if you're going to see this, but if I squeeze in the right bit, you can see the LEDs going on and off there. The so that horrible little metal strip that runs along these, the corrosion has uh, occurred, just humidity probably penetrating the resin. And it's resulted in a bad connection there. Maybe even if they use that conductive adhesive uh, that sticks on. I'm not sure how they, they use these. I don't really, I've never really liked these little metal strips they use on solar panels. I always thought they were a weak spot. However, I dug through my pile of stuff and found another solar panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the lid off, off this one. Hopefully I'll remove the battery from this one in the past. I'll keep the screws separate so I don't mix them up. And if this one is... Well, it will happily drive these LEDs, I'd expect. Uh, and if it's in decent state inside, if it's not got an old battery in it that has leaked or something like that, then I shall graft the two sets together. Oh, there is a battery in this. Oh, dear. Oh, there's a, a diode in here. That's a strange bit of circuitry. This is very strange, but it is what it is. I wonder why they've got that, because there's this standard little chip. Why have they put an extra diode in series effectively? Oh, you know what? It's so it can charge the battery, even when it's turned off. That's odd. Uh, okay, so I'll change this battery anyway. And I'll work out which connections are which here. And I shall... Uh, graft this set into this one and then we'll see if it works. One moment, please. Okay, let's get these fixed. So because this circuit board is glued in, I cut the wires here to determine the polarity. I got a red LED and put it across them. The reason I chose a red LED was because they don't mind the polarity being reversed. Just stick an LED across and just give the battery a quick dab. If the LED doesn't light, try it around the other way. And if it does like that, then mark the appropriate one positive, which I've done by marking the green cable red, which isn't terribly clear. For the light string itself, I find the best way to test polarity without exceeding the reverse voltage is just to use a little bit lithium button cell. And if you hold it across, if the LEDs light like they are at the moment, then that's the correct polarity. If they don't light, you just swap it around. So now I've determined that this is the positive. What I'll do is I shall just mark the actual copper itself because the solder will wipe that off when, uh, when I solder it. So now that's marked, let's push it through the little grommet in the case and do what they do and just tie a knot in it. It's rough, but it works. Strain relief on a budget. And now I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink sleeving over this. Could possibly have used thinner heat shrink sleeving, but this is what I have used. And I shall twist the wires together. Technically speaking, I should twist it together and before heat shrinking it, I should actually check it does work, that I've not made a mistake with polarities because, you know, that can happen. So I'll twist these together. I'll just twist them before I solder them. And then we'll see what happens. We'll give it a wee buzz with the battery. There is a possibility that the inductor in this is a, a different value to the, the one in the original, which means it might not be as bright, but uh, we'll see how it bright it looks when I stick it in. Is it going to work? Yes, it is. Let's turn the lights off and we'll take the exposure off. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Watch your eyes. The light is coming back. Okay, dokie. I'll just make sure that exposure is correct. Righty ho. So I'm going to solder these now, and then I'll put the heat shrink over them. And then that should theoretically mean I just need to screw this up, and that is Ralph's lights fixed. Interesting construction. I quite like the construction of those lights. 
I think the brand of these, it's a, it's a British reseller, was Festive Lights. I think it was. I always thought they were a sort of Irish profile brand, so a bit disappointing that this solar panel on that one has given out. I don't think he's had them a huge length of time. So I shall put the heat shrink down like this, and the heat shrink down like this. I'm surprised he's even got them on the Isle of Man, because uh, any time I looked at Festive Lights eBay listings, they didn't ship to Isle of Man. Otherwise I'd have had some of the lights before, but it didn't happen, because they don't ship to the Isle of Man. Uh, when you don't ship to the Man, I can't actually make a video about products. I had that uh, on eBay today, as usual. Some Chinese sellers were just not shipping to Man, so all you have to do is uh, find a listing that does, but sometimes it's a bit more expensive. It's always a bit annoying, that. One of the perils of living on an island. The heat shrink is shrunk. For those who are never going to ask, the sojourn and the hot air gun are part of a station called a Yahua 8786D. Uh, it's a generic a Chinese -y unit. Oh, I actually should have... Uh, oh, no, it doesn't really matter. The battery was in. It's fine. Let's uh, put this solar panel back on and stuff the wires inside. The lights will have gone out now because the solar panels detect the light, and if I cover it, they should light. That's it. It's working. So uh, the screws go in, and Ralph gets his lights back. I do notice that that one, uh, there's still that problematic one, that sometimes some of the LEDs light dimly at the end, uh, and sometimes not at all. It doesn't matter. It's just there's not really much you can do about that. I could get another 3-volt LED filament, but the downside to that is it would have to match all the others for the combined voltage, because if it doesn't match... Um, and they all really have to come from the same batch for that. If it doesn't match, then you'll end up with that light could be brighter than all the others, or vice versa. It could be really dim, while all the others are bright-ish. If you wanted to brighten this up, the inductor in this is 100 micro henry. Uh, the lower the inductor value, down to about, I think, 33 micro henry, I think it's the lowest, the brighter it gets. And as you put in bigger inductors, like up to 470 micro henry, the current gets lower. And uh, that's kind of useful for taming lights down and making the battery last longer in winter. But in this case, uh, it's a balance. You know, these are amply bright enough for the visual effect. Well, look how squint that one is inside. So these are amply bright enough for the visual effect. But um, is that loose inside? Oh, it's glued shut. I'll maybe take a look at that afterwards. Yeah, these are amply bright enough, so it's a compromise. It's a, a juggling act between the battery life uh, for the daily sunshine. You know, they're going to, if they run at a slightly lower intensity, they'll stay lit longer in the sort of darker months of the year. But that's it fixed, and now they shall go back to Ralph. If they'd all failed over time, I would consider putting little cluster of LEDs in these, you know, because the fact they come apart and you got those little two wires going into that means you can customise it. You could put a little spray of LEDs or just snake some of the sort of, uh, get one of those big long strings of the copper wire LEDs and just solder sections in of whatever colour you wanted. But there we go. They are fixed and now they go back to Ralphie. And that means this task is complete.